Okay. So we sort of stopped in the middle of an example, kind of. Yeah, maybe let's just restart it. No, remember. that'll take too long. It no. was a very long example. Well, I don't remember. But okay, but we like it was a good stopping point for the example because mm -hmm. we were looking at give me a second to think of what I'm gonna say here. Mm -hmm. We were looking at if a king and pawn in game were to occur. Yeah. But in the game the king and pawn in game did not occur. The person didn't go into it that was playing the game. We were just looking at analysis if the king and pawn in game did occur. Alright? And so my point is we finished the king and pawn in game analysis. Oh, and now okay. we can continue with how the game actually went. Okay, yeah, that's fine then. Yeah. I thought it, we were like in the middle. Of, I couldn't remember. Right, it's not like we were in the middle. We actually had a good stopping point. We oh, were okay. like in the middle of a line, for example. But yeah, this this example is several pages long. Wait, now what are you saying here? Um, hang on. Maybe you and Karen can team up. I think seeing her play Warzone would be funny. <laughs> I don't even know what that is. I mean, I like other games, but, um, m you know, my next games I want to play that I think Coach and I talked about it, too, is I want to play Among Us, and um, and then I want to play some poker. So I don't want to get too far afield on other games because I got my games I like, and I want to improve in chess and get some co some poker going on. <laughs> I, re I really love the poker. I could see me getting, poker is fun. getting hooked into some, some poker and, you know. <laughs> All right, so from here, we had we spent a long time analyzing knight takes, e takes. And then we did a lot of analysis on that. Yeah. And it turns out, I forgot, white wins, maybe. <laughs> I remember spending <laughs> a, was a good amount of time, time on it. Analyzing, I don't even remember what the yeah. conclusion. Anyways, uh, so instead, we'll look at, you know, in the game, they played here. Mm-hmm. But instead, we're looking at this now. I guess this move doesn't make a lot of sense. Yeah, I guess it doesn't make too much sense. This jack. Why wouldn't you at least move your king up if you're not going to take? So white fixes the c-pawn on c4 and ties down the black bishop to its defense. Moving towards the middle does not help. For example, king e7, g4, king f8. Kind of weird variation to just go back and forth. But then we'll make a passed pawn. Thank you, Joe Adam, for that sub. Thank you so much. You guys are great. <clears throat> so king g7, h4. This, is, this not only gets white's kingside majority into motion, but also stops counterplay based on this move. See, I can't go here. Yeah, this is nice because uh, obviously black can't do anything, right? Mm -hmm. This is all stuck. And we have, you know, basically three against two or four against three, however you want to look mm -hmm. at it, on the king side. Now white has many ways to win the game. She can take her time and play fixer moves like a3. I like that. Or she can go into a winning king and pawn game by taking and playing f5. By fixer moves... Just improving the position. Okay. Well, it's nice to put the pawn here off the square So the bishop, yeah. yeah. I was thinking that too. Definitely. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, Clean up. And if you take and play f5, that's similar to what we looked at earlier, but just a better version, because we basically got these moves for free, because he was just moving back and forth. Right. Uh, or white can go for a win of material by playing g5, king f8, check, and knight b6, which will win the pawn by force. Mm -hmm. Mr. Ilya says, is the knight stronger than the bishop here? It seems like it. I would say yes. Because the bishop's Definitely. having to just hold it all together. <laughs> yeah, the bishop's very passive. Knight can just hop around. Yeah, if you put the pawn back here, now you're talking. <laughs> yeah. That bishop might be pretty good. Mm -hmm. Although he might get forked, but, you know, assuming that we don't get forked. <laughs> then it might be a good bishop. So, yeah. After looking at this endgame, world champion candidate, maybe you've heard of him, Yasser Sarawan said, my thought process would be that if the king and pawn endgame was close, white should start with king c3. Pretty good Yasser impression. <laughs> In order to get the king and pawn endgame she wants by handcuffing the bishop to the pawn, 
And as black passes by moving the king back and forth, like he's done, we could advance with g4, h4, like we saw in this example. Mm -hmm. Getting the position where black's king is on g7 before playing f5. You know, like this. And the, like, for example, takes an f5. She can transpose to the king and pawn game that way. Note that Sarawan made it clear that he would have no interest in entering a close position from a position of strength. What Silman's saying is that he doesn't want to, in this position, yes or would not take, even if it wins, because then you'd have to calculate those droves of analysis that we did yesterday. Yeah. Why not do the same thing, but, you know, wait till you're here? Now take and go here. Mm -hmm. Just a better version of the yeah, same thing. Yeah, you've got plenty of time to do it. Yes. They can't change Yeah, they the can't position. help anything at all. Mm -hmm. They just have to move back and forth. And, yeah, and I agree. That's like we looked at this example before yesterday where it was Aronin against Smyslov. And mm -hmm. Aronin went here and took the bishop and then got into a king and pawn and even that happened to be a draw. And he traded away his better rook and his better minor piece. So, like, this knight's better than the bishop. So you don't want to trade it, even if that wins. If that wins, then this position wins no matter what. Mm -hmm. Right? You can't say, like, oh, I traded because I was winning. Like, you're winning anyway then because the knight's better than the bishop. So it's illogical. Then people do this, like, when they give away material, too. Like, they'll have, like, a queen for a rook, and then they'll, like, sack their queen for the rook to, like, enter a winning endgame. And I'm like, why'd you give up a queen's better than her? They're like, I'm winning. Like, okay, you were winning before you gave up the queen for a rook. What are you talking about? That's not a logical example. No. You know, a logical... That's uh, crazy. Yeah. A train of thought that, you know, you gotta, you know, make more sense than that if you're gonna play a good chess move. Uh, okay, we've seen players of all strength having trouble correctly assessing some very complicated king upon end games. However, it's not uncommon for even world class players to botch positions that should be well within their range to solve. The next game will be between the legendary Miguel Nidorf and world champion contender Mekin. This is a winning winning end game for Black, but doesn't he doesn't even come close to winning it? Does Mekking? Mekking will have black here. Do you know uh Miguel's... So you're saying so you're saying he messed it up? Oh yeah. Um, Do you know Miguel's nickname? Miguel Nidorf's nickname? Um So this isn't like a joke, is it? You know? <laughs> I know, I'm trying to think if I remember. No. Don Miguel. Really? Yeah. Mm. Don Miguel. Mm. Let's see if this is right. Looks right. Making sure. Black to move. Mm -hmm. I think that's just the one and only Nidorf. Yes. <laughs> yes. He uh, sort of invented the Nidorf Sicilian, I, I guess. All right. In the actual game, Black threw away the the win here. Mecking played e3 check blunder. Oh, that's usually the right idea to give yourself a protected pass pawn. Mm -hmm. So we can, uh, you know, we don't have to make fun of him too bad, just a little. King c4. And after h5, they agree to a draw. Because you can't take this, I'll go here, and white wins. You're making a pass pawn before you get to. You have to take like this and then go all the way down there. Mm -hmm. So you're not going to have time for all that. Instead, Mecking should have played EF, X-Clam. And King E5. Now this wins for the following three reasons. One, at some point, White will be forced to advance the king side pawns. Which that's pretty clear to me because this situation is very favorable for Black on the queen side. Black has two tempi moves. White only has one. Also, it's White's turn right now. So White's going to be zugzwanged, you know, out of that. And you can't just move your king, because then I can push my king up. Then I could push my paw, and then I could play king f4, and then I could take you. Mm. <clears throat> Trying to hold Black off with king, though I just explained this. Playing king f2 would fail because of king e4, f3, king f4. <laughs> I just said that. That's part two. Three... Black has two temp. Whoa, this is everything I just said. Black has two tempi moves on the queen side, mm -hmm. and white only has one. So all of those reasons combine for a win here. Let's look at this variation. 
For example, g5, now we can use our extra tempi. Right? We wasted more moves than he could, mainly, etc. So easily lost now. It's going to lose everybody. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or if king e2 doesn't look great, same situation, going to lose everybody. Also, king f1, game over. These are all easy wins. All of these variations. So h5 is the best defense. Now at least he can't just run in there and take all the pawns. He's going to have to use a little bit of effort here. Mm -hmm. In fact, black only has one winning move. I didn't even see it because it's on the next page. So black to play and win. I think I have a guess. <clears throat> I'm almost 100% sure that I'm right. <laughs> Although there are two interesting moves to me, but no, no, that doesn't work, yeah. Mm. It's actually not clear to me anymore. No, this is tough. This is too tough. Let's see what people in this chat say. Never play f6. That is illegal, so correct. Never play that. I don't really like that move, Jedi. I think that uh, might even lose. <laughs> really. No, Mr. Ilias with the same suggestion as Jedi. Yeah, Joe Adam gets it. All right, I think it might be Mr. Popezilla's move. Yeah, I have no but idea. I'm not even sure. Well, the thing that I'm understanding is that h6 is not right because of g5. Right, I, was, I looked at that and it didn't seem right. So we could play f3 or we could make some king moves to, like, Zugzwang. Like, mm -hmm. an interesting king move might be king d5. The idea is king f3, king e5. And then try to make you move your pawn so I can go take them. But I wasn't sure about that, because king d5, we could play king e2. I don't know what, king e6? Like, is that really right? <laughs> yeah. I thought f3. All right, f3, that's the normal winning move. That's why. That's the one that I thought would then... be right. Then, uh, well, the problem is, if we can go here, then if you go and take my pawns, I'll take your pawn. Mm-hmm. Like, or, I'm sorry, let's say f3, g5, king f5, g6, takes, mm -hmm. takes, takes, king takes f3. We just traded all the pawns. Right. My king's on f3, yours is on g6. That shouldn't win. Or why does that win? I would expect it does not. You can't win on the other side of the board. I mean, we both have three pawns. How are you going to win if our kings are here? Like, what's the, what's the winning um... plan? You're going to shoulder me out or something? And it's just king and three each. Yeah. So I think it might be some subtle king move like this. Let's see what he says. I guess I still thought it might be winning for butt because they still do have more tempi to play around with. But let's say, like, my king gets here. How are you going to zugzwang me? I'll just play king back and forth. Even if you get your king here, I can go back and forth. I'm never going to get zugzwanged. Yeah. I'm always going to have ways to defend my c-pawn. King e5 wins. Dang it, almost. <laughs> I can only guess that Mecking missed this move. Other tries don't get the job done. Jedi Bleeder has it. Yeah, definitely. That's well, true. that was his second guess. He guessed h6 first. Oh. <laughs> mm -hmm. Hey, Scottish Demon Goat. <laughs> hey, Scottish Demon Goat. Always with the joke, huh? If h6, g5, he says wins for white. And let's see if all of our analysis is right. F3, G5, G6. Takes, takes, takes. Should draw. He gives more variation, actually. It's 
gets nowhere for black. Mm-hmm. Right, this is what I was talking. If you waste a tempo, like, we can just do this for fun. I'll just play king b2, king c2. Right, right, right. Then if you go here, I'll play king b3, king b2. So you can never zugzwang me. So sh why is the other so why is the other move winning? Okay. Well, let, we'll look at that. Let's see if there are other moves that that don't win. Right, okay. like a six, just wasting mm -hmm. a tempo. This is tough. This could win. You know, because like a three, c six, it's zugzwang, but king f one, x clam. King e one also actually holds. King e five. King f two. King f6, king f3, king g5. Now, this looks like it's going to win for black, right? a3, c6, game over, right? But h6, x clam. And look at this. Because we don't have our extra tempo move, we can't win. Imagine we played a6 now, and they play a3, and we play c6, zugzwang. Mm-hmm. But because we already played a6, this is not going to win. If we play c6, they play a3. Black is in zugzwang. Black has to take, take, and that won't win, clearly. Mm -hmm. If anybody's better, there's white. So yeah, it's you, it's very risky to throw away your tempo moves. You don't want to do that unless you have a specific reason to do it, like to zugzwang them right away. Hey, Intelligent. Oh, got tested negative today? Is that true? Yeah, that's great. Awesome. You fought it off. <laughs> nice. Time flew for us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Probably it was tough, though. <laughs> you know, living with it. King e5. King f3. Nothing saves white after king e5. For example, g5. King f5. g6. Takes well, obviously taking and king takes is is lost down a pawn for nothing. Mm -hmm. Could try this, I guess king f six, yep. But then we're in time to protect our pawn and stop your pawn. So that's gonna be a win. Up a pawn or two. Also king e two. This is the idea. But now we can win because we didn't throw away our tempo earlier. And then black plays c6 and white loses. Just going to lose your pawn. Oh, yeah, it has to move away. Yeah, okay. it's a trebuchet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So king f3, h6, x clam. Now g5 is not going to work because we can take it and we're in the square. Now white's in Zugzwang. We even have an extra tempo to spare, which is nice. Might be able to use that later. You know, like if he plays here, or if he even does like this. Right, this is right. Here, now we can use our extra move again. Nice. And win the game. Mm -hmm. Now it's time for white to resign. So this would have won for mecking. E takes F going into this end game. Although you have to play very precisely here. H5 is a tough defense. Yeah, King E5, Elon Tusk, that was the win. Yeah, King E5 was the win. Next time pick a smaller book. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, I feel like King D5 should win, though. How does that not win? Probably two more streams will be done with it. <laughs> huh. I don't get why that doesn't win. Because, I mean, if he goes here, there, we're just... We lost the tempo, which is, like, good. Right? You know, we want to lose the tempo here. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, King E5 won by force, so I can't really complain. But he said only one move wins. I don't see why this wouldn't win. Right, because it's still... I mean, maybe, like, something like this. Yes, yeah, that's why. Okay, I, I got it. Here, oh, you're not close and here. To catch it. We are, but oh, we'll yeah, just trade are. the pawns. Oh, okay, that's yeah, why. That's a draw. Yeah. But king e5, we, that didn't work with king e5 because we're, we were closer now. And then we have time to come back. Figured it out. Oh, I see. Tough endgame, very delicate. 
very delicate stuff. Yeah, that's very tricky. Nice. All right, let's look at the next example. What about G5, says trying to King learn. King D5, G5. Yeah, that's what I, yeah, I figured it out. Uh, <laughs> I figured oh, okay. it out, you guys. I didn't know he's. Absolutely. All right, so we'll look at this game. It's Bakro against Kramnik from Dortmund 2005. Some of these pawns up on here. There we go. Okay, that looks correct to me. White should be up two pawns, which he is. His pawn structure is pretty bad. Not well, two pawns. Mm -hmm. All right. So white is two pawns up and is clearly winning. Yet claiming a theoretical win and actually proving it are two different things. In the present situation, white has many good moves. Uh, like rook b5 looks good. H4 is not bad, right? Uh, offering a rook exchange by rook e5 is pretty tempting, though. You're going to be in a two pawn up endgame if they accept. Uh, also, if they don't accept, then you can maybe play e4, which is nice to get that in because your e pawn is pretty weak. Mm -hmm. And then you can move your king up more easily because it won't be blocked on the e file, cut off by the other rook. So. Um, if the resulting king and pawn endgame is indeed a win, it would avoid the potential complications of a long, drawn-out rook endgame. This is what I mentioned the other day. Rook endgames are easier to draw than king and pawn endgames. So if, if you're in a rook endgame you want to win, let's go to king and pawn endgame. Assuming it's winning, of course. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Don't want to get in a forced draw. Thus, we come face-to-face -face with a common question. Does entry into the king and pawn endgame make life easier, or or are we settling setting ourselves up for some strange king and pawn endgame pitfall? Kramnik played rook e5 x clam. Best. Two sets of double isolated pawns will demand some skill from white before he gains the full point. Here's some useful advice. If you find yourself facing a decision like this, and you have any doubts about the king and pawn endgame that results, avoid it. That's fair. Don't go into a king upon endgame unless you know it's winning. You know, assuming you already started winning. Takes. And g5, the obvious move, stopping mm -hmm. king f4. Stopping white's king from penetrating and also gaining counterplay by setting his own pawn majority in motion. Completely hopeless would be something like king e7 to e6, hoping for some Zugzwang scenario where there are a lot of winning variations here. For example, h4, c5, h5. Nice. Wins quickly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're going to do more learning things after this computer flight. <laughs> Why not king e6 then? Well, that'll play king takes g5 after that computer flight. Yeah, I'm not sure if we'll do a book, but we'll definitely keep doing learning stuff. Yeah, that's going to win out of hand. I mean, I, you can't do anything. You can't even like go take my pawn after you take this pawn, because I'll queen. And if you go over here and take these pawns, I'll take this and queen that. Right. If you do nothing, I'll go take this and queen that. <laughs> so i got a lot of plans. So he plays g5 first. The material in part 5 should have already taught you that side-by-side -side passed pawns separated by one file guard themselves. For example, king e6, c6. You mm -hmm. remember that from before. Mm -hmm. h6, c4. Somehow Kramnik calculated this accurately. Who would have thought? h5. You could try to play the waiting game, but that's going to lose. C6. Again, we can't take because we're queen. Lots of plans, that's true. <laughs> 
King e4 wins here, as does e6. Even this will win, right? Yeah, seems like it would. He actually plays, uh, he does do this, yeah, he does do that. Yeah, we just yeah, yeah. get the queens off the floor. Yeah. Just wondering if he was going to play e7 check there, mm. which also wins. So you can't just wait around. So h5 is the try that Bach Crow went for. He's trying to, you know, make a queen with his three pawns against one or two. h4. g4. Black doesn't, this doesn't help because we'll go here and take these. And this isn't a passed pawn, so it can't defend the other ones. Similar lines to the actual game occur after king d8. Because now we can't take the pawn because he'll queen. We can play c6 and e6 though. c5. e3. King d8, c6. So c king c6. And now king e5. This sort of position occurs in the game, so let's let's uh, just analyze that the game went, which was king e6, and then king e7, and then king e6. Black has no choice, because if you go here, then this is going to help white, clearly. So we'll play king e6, but now Kramnik finds the key move in this position, c7. White gives up this pawn, so it's e pawn can march down the board with tempo, like this. Obviously, you can't take the e-pawn on queen. Got to take right. my c-pawn. E3, x-clam. Most accurate. Who would have thought Kramnik? Well, uh, yeah, in e3, if king d8, c6 wins immediately. So black must move his king to c6. This is the position that I said we'd look at that, you know. Wait, now why e3? It's it's like a Zugzwang move. Oh, okay. You have to play king c6 now. Oh, okay, I see. So now he forced this position where king e5 wins. x clam, Leading to a winning queen endgame now. e7 double question mark would lose, actually, for white. White could have tried king takes f5, though. But he leaves the pawn on the board on purpose. This actually should win. But he leaves the pawn on purpose on f5. Which will benefit him later. When both sides queen. Let's see how. Like a little shield, maybe? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can already see that he's going to be shielded, yes. Mm. Queen. Yeah, and this is where he's being shielded. C7 resigns. Mm -hmm. He's going to promote to another queen. You don't even have any checks. You have this check, but I think that would win. Yeah. Probably wins, yeah. I'm guessing. Let's see what he says. He actually doesn't do that. He, he After check... Come on. Not that. Check. Black just runs out of checks if we move our king away. What? This. <laughs> Still learning how the pieces move. Bueno snow checks. Mm okay. Nice. Yeah, queen d4 might not win, actually, in that position, because he could trade queens and... No, he has to take the c pawn, then go back and take the a pawn, but you'd have to calculate that, so... Yeah. No reason to calculate that. Nice. All right, one more example for this section. Our final example shows me, Silman, entering an extremely complex king and pawn in game simply because it was the only chance for survival. Interesting, if true. Yeah, Kramnik's pretty good to uh, know that that king and pawn in game was winning. Not very easy. Mm -hmm. I wonder how much he calculated. Probably a lot. 
Yeah, that's a good point. Um, trying to learn that, especially in a long game, it's hard with the end games because you're tired. Mm -hmm. And then this is that really is some tough stuff. That makes it all the more impressive mm -hmm. that Kramnik could figure that out. So this is uh, Milot, I don't know who that is, against Silman from the National Open, 1998. Black to move, because he's in check. My opponent had been thrashing me the whole game. He missed even uh, an instant win earlier, did White. And the creation of various perpetual check themes was his only line of defense. After offering my opponent several bottles of free beer, which he refused, seemingly intent on winning the game, we reached the position of that. Did he really offer me? I don't know. Like, what? <laughs> I mean, you're not allowed to drink it. Alcohol. Well, my dad said that when he was playing in Bundesliga, his opponents would ask him, like, he, they, his opponents would go get a drink and oh, ask okay. if he wanted one. Okay, maybe in other countries <laughs> you can. Or... Yeah, but this is the National Open. That's in America. Oh, okay, that's right. So I don't know what's going on. What year was it? 98. Oh. Not even that long ago. <laughs> you get like, okay, 1960, then maybe who knows what's going on. <laughs> you know, they're doing doobies at the board. <laughs> Anyways, Black has uh, two legal moves. Only one is playable. King E7, X clam. King D7, double question mark would lose. King E7 is the only good move, and it shows how selection between seemingly similar choices can have an enormous impact on the game's result. When facing this kind of decisions, you can't take it lightly. It's very important to hunker down and try to discern the dif what the differences are, and how those differences will ultimately affect your chances. In this case, King d7 would have led to a lost king and pawn endgame after queen e6 check. Takes, f takes, check. Note that this move comes with check. So you have to play king takes e3, or e6 rather, and then g4, where now white is winning out of hand with his queenside majority. Computer Fight says, I feel like I literally can't visualize, which is a problem. <laughs> <laughs> you lose a thousand rating at the position that's in your head instead of in front of you. It is hard to visualize. You should probably do more tactics. Yeah. That would be my guess. King e7. Now white played queen e6 check anyway. At the time, I was positive that this allowed me to save myself, uh, although much of my view was based on ignorance. He was more worried, he says, about this, which would worry me. Yeah. Queen b7, although he was pretty sure that queen d1 check would give sufficient play. I reasoned that my king was active, or white's was vulnerable, and that the white queen is kind of out of play to stop perpetual check. Whether this really drew didn't matter at the time. The game had been going on for hours, and my old, exhausted brain was willing to grab hold of any happy result, real or imagined. So check. Now he doesn't have to play king takes e6. So he plays f5. Made possible because he played king e7 earlier, like we talked about. Mm -hmm. Now his kingside majority is mobile, his two against one. And so both sides just have a majority now. B3. C3. So he wants to play B4. Hey, Karen, how come he didn't just play C3, B4? Um, <clears throat> let's see. Mm. Oh no, let's see. Let's see if I can visualize that better. C3, B4. Yeah, how come he played B3, C3, B4? Instead of just C3, B4. Almost Sinbad. He got the right idea, but the wrong square because he typoed it or, you know, mm -hmm. said the wrong square. But but it is the right idea, yes. Mm. 
I actually asked you a very similar thing the other day. Yeah, I remember that. I had to do with the past pawn, like me helping them, but um, I can't visualize it. It has time. to do with en passant. Oh. If c3, we'll play c4. Now you can't play with your b pawn because I'll take it. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So he has to play b3 first to stop c4. I see now. And then uh, now he can play c3, b4. Mm. Silman says he began to think, I might even have winning chances. At this point, a well-known grandmaster happened to stroll by. He glanced at the position for a couple of minutes and walked away. Later, he confided that he also thought black was on top. Two minutes isn't enough time for anyone to figure things out. But it shows that even a world-class player won't find these positions easy. Now I began to think. I thought that, and I thought and thought and thought. It's like a Dr. Seuss thing. And <laughs> became more and more depressed as the minutes ticked by. Finally, I convinced myself that I was lost. White can create an annoying outside pass pawn on the queen side. True, Black's king is more active than White's, but during the game, I couldn't see how this was going to save me against best play. Cursing my luck, I struggled to find some saving scheme and finally came up with something. Notice that he didn't say he came up with something good. <laughs> <laughs> king e5? At the time, I thought this was very important. The idea is to meet king e3 with the check. Unfortunately, it turns out this check is a losing blunder. However, during the game, I fully intended to play it. Embarrassing, but true. Let's see why king e3, f4, check fails. King f3. If king d3, king d5, b4, c4, check. King e2, g4. Creates a drawing blockade. Ah, yes. You can't go here, I'll just take it, and then and then go take your pawn. Because I'm going to go take it. Mm -hmm. And your king can't, like... Well, your king can't do anything. Right? <laughs> you just can't do anything. Even if you could run all the way around here, which you won't be able to, since my king's going to be there, I'll make a queen with f3. So this would be a draw. But instead of king d3, it would have been king f3. King f5, to try to you know, kick it wicket. And b4, g4, a5. Let's try to get in that square. Square beyond compare. <laughs> I really believed that this was drawing, since if king d3, double question mark, c4 check. Okay. I happily rested on my fool's paradise until I got home, setting up this position on the board, and I immediately realized c4 check wins for white. For example, king c6, because obviously you can't take and let him queen. Mm -hmm. King d3, king b7, king e4. Gonna take all your pawns. You could try to jettison them away, like this. This looks pretty familiar, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Not king d5, king b4, but king e5. Remember, if we can attack the pawn diagonally, we win. Oh, yeah. Trebuchet. Trebuchet, yeah. <clears throat> Fortunately... After king e5, white didn't play king e3, which would have lost, I mean, would have, if black plays f4, black would lose then, as we saw. Mm -hmm. White didn't play king e3, though. White played g3 in the game. King d5, king d6, distant opposition here. Now, don't play king d3 because c4 check wins for black. Nice. Now, if you take, we'll play king c5. Now, who's trebuchet? <laughs> so, he played, uh, instead of king d3, he played king c2. They move their kings around a bit. And he finally plays b4. Play the same idea.
And we can, I mean, I'm not looking at the book now, but I guess this is how the game went. And then look where we get, right to that bishop square. <laughs> Just mm -hmm. where we need to get. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, he played king f7. <laughs> also drawing, of course. But all those other moves happen. At the time, I was so impressed with myself. As already pointed out, though, my elation turned into self-loathing when I returned home. <laughs> It seemed, incorrectly as it turns out, that I was indeed lost after king e3. With this variation f, f4, king f3, etc. was winning for white. Um, in a way, I was lucky to have been deluded. Who knows what I would have done if he'd, he'd seen what was really going on. Now, other voices started to join in on this king and pawn endgame debate. First, his friend Jack Peters, no wonder he's always showing Jack <laughs> Peters games, offered some new ideas in this position starting from this diagram, which I have on the board. And Computer Flight has a suggestion. Oh, king yes. E5, King B6, better try. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know where he's talking. Yeah, I'm not going to know. Yeah. G3, G3. In the trebuchet position. Oh, in the trebuchet. He probably means around here. Obviously, no, because we go there and win your pawn. Come on. Kidding me over here? All right, let's say... Okay, actually here. This This is the position that Jack Peters weighed in on. So it's actually after king e3, f4, check. He says, you win the pawn when I get out. Then I go over here and take this pawn. And you have to walk all the way here and you won't get to f f7 uh, or 8 in time. We can play it out, though. Mm. Let's see if I can figure it out. Yeah, here we go. Mainly, etc. Although I did only win by one tempo, so... Mm -hmm. All right, so here, this is where, uh, during the game, Silman thought that this would draw, but then at, at when he got home, he saw that that was winning. But then Peters came in, and he has a lot to say here. We had already pointed out that a5, here, 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 this wins for white. But Jack noted quite correctly that black can put up a better, but ultimately hopeless defense after king c6, king d3, king b7, king e4, instead of f3, which is what we looked at, king a6. Like this, this is a little bit tougher. Mm -hmm. Now white wins with king f3 x clan. Kind of a weird move. But he wants to be able to catch the pawn, right? If you know, in, in the square. Yeah. Well, it wasn't a great square, but you know, <laughs> g4. With four possibilities, black could play king d5. But after this, white queens. By force. Takes h7. And if not takes, like here, we go takes. And queen. Mm -hmm. King b3. And then here, so we can check when we queen. White wins by queening with check. King d3. Seems like the best try so far, because I'm not going to queen with check now. Unfortunate, huh? Yeah. Etc. Yeah, one tempo does change everything, computer flight. That's true. That's why it's so hard. A game of tempi. <laughs> King B4. This is the point of doing this. Now we have to play King A3. You don't want to step on that square. So if we want to help our pawn, we have to 
bring it around the horn here. Mm -hmm. But now, unfortunately, we queen this pawn in check. Dang it. <laughs> <laughs> so this still is losing for black. I wasn't too upset by these additions. They basically verified his own conclusion, which was that white would win. Because white won in all these variations. Then I found a bombshell waiting in my email. It's like when the guy emailed you. <laughs> <laughs> he, he got an email, Silman, you're an idiot. No, 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 it doesn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> a strong grandmaster who wishes to remain anonymous claimed that my analysis was completely flawed. So it was kind of like he said that. And that black was better after all. That makes two grandmasters who are off their rocker. Though a draw would ultimately be the correct result. Shocked, I glanced at his email blindfolded. As the year, years go, rolled by, I got lazier and lazier and didn't bother looking at a chessboard. And took his word for it. I was too influenced by his high rating. Sending the analysis to Watson, I am John Watson, he lambasted me for listening to anyone. A very wise bit of criticism. This prompted me to take a closer look, and I immediately saw the Grandmaster was hallucinating. <laughs> yeah, I never listen to anyone. That's right. Yeah, anybody can make a mistake. Yeah, you got to make sure that they're right. Okay, let's see. It's actually back here. Black to move. So he, he in the game, played King e5. Uh, or would have played. No, he did play king e5. He played king e5, and if king e3, he would have played f4 and did all that analysis we looked at. But in the game, the guy played g3. Instead, the unknown grandmaster suggested, it's like the unknown soldier, suggested king d5. He considered, the grandmaster considered king e5 to be a mistake, the move that was played in the game. In reality, both these moves actually lead to a draw. Which is interesting, because so far, when we've analyzed king e5, every variation's been winning for white. Everything we've done with best play has been winning for white. So we still have more to uncover there. King e3. King c6. His idea is to play b5. I must admit, I'd never consider such a plan. It is pretty weird to advance your the minority in a king of fighting. You're not usually doing that. But... Okay, when if everything looks losing, you gotta try something, you know. King d3. The Grandmaster here claimed that black wins if b4. King d5, king d3, f4, a5, ba. This, this, by the way, this analysis is horribly flawed. For example, c4 check is the correct way for black to win the game. This will win, yes. We'll just take it and then go win it. Takes. Now white should play c4, I'm guessing. Yes, now c4, white's better, he says. But the analysis that the Grandmaster gave was this. And then c4. And g4. But I am John Watson, and Patrick Hummel pointed out that he was a bit off since white playing c4, like we mentioned, would win for white. My international master Ron Burnett, these are like all people I've heard of. And I know Ron. Yeah, definitely. He li he's played at our chess club. Wow. Mm -hmm. He's played Ben, too. Burnett actually asked, why does this win for white? Here. Wait, wait. Here. But, okay, so this is a position where Watson and Hummel wanted C4, and they said that wins. But Burnett was like, I don't see how C4 wins. Fortunately, Mr. Hummel had answered this question several... I don't actually don't know who Hummel is. Uh, ...several days earlier and saved me the trouble of doing any real work. King d6. King e5. King e2 x clam. G4, then back to d3. White's king will penetrate to e4 and win. Yes. You will, because you can't step over here. I'll win over here, then. You'll be outside the square. Really nice analysis there. So you have to give up the square. You have to let me go there. Or you can just lose your pawn, like with f3. Or you could play g3 and let me come in here. You can never play king e4 with black, because I'll play a5 and queen. 
Uh, so the king has to head back over there to stop the queening? The king has to stay within the box of this pawn. Okay. So if you go over here, that's too far. So you have to yeah. make... Well, okay, this would still be too far, right? You have to just uh, stay in the box and then lose your e-pawn. Or lose the e4 square and lose all your pawns. Hey, Pa, drink water. <laughs> all right, so b4... Um, is winning for white then because of that c4 check as Hummel pointed out king d3 this is very interesting having so many people analyze this yeah. b5 I later discovered that this is a losing blunder but the black could still draw with the correct move here though I'm leaving that to the master or near master don't forget this is the master section who is reading this analysis to figure it out by himself dang it <laughs> That's me. <laughs> so how would we not lose this position with black? Since b5 does lose. I would guess it's going to be... I mean, king d5, maybe? It doesn't make any sense to go here, because we can go there. This move won't make sense, because we can just take with the king this time. Mm -hmm. This won't make sense either, because we can step in there. I don't think we can play any subtle, weird king move. So I think it must be king d5, right? It's like the only logical move other than b5. Yeah, in fact, king d5. Yes, because now if you go here, I'll play c4 check. It is king d5. Luckily, I'm a master, so I can figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, here we, we check. Exactly right. And again, if you ever make a pass pawn in this scenario, we can go take it with our king. So it's not right. going to work. Mm -hmm. Elon Tusk, not a master. A5 taking advantage of the B6 square. Yes, that's true. <laughs> a phone in the bathroom might help. <laughs> yes. Is that the, is that, who is that, Re Rousis, right? Is that Igor Rousis? I forgot. That had the phone in, is he the one that yeah, was on? Yeah, I think it was him. They saw him looking over the mm -hmm. stall. Yeah. I, I think it was him. There's probably been more than one, but. All right. <laughs> but he's pretty high rated. <laughs> All right, so King D5 probably draws. We can check with the engine just to be 100% sure. Oh, oh, 1.2, that's not winning. No, this this draws, yeah, that'll draw. B5, I later discovered that this is a losing blunder. Oh, I already read that, sorry. After B5, our mystery grandmaster claims a draw by A takes, king takes, king E2, king C6, G3, king D5, king E3, king E5, King f3, king d5. However, Watson, once again, it's elementary, Watson, points out that white wins easily with, instead of taking even, a5. Now, the black should play b4 to not give you protected pass bond, right? Mm -hmm. Otherwise, white plays b4. Takes, takes king d4. King e5. Here, go take that pawn. Who cares about this guy? Nobody, that's who. And black can just resign. Mm -hmm. So what does this mean? Are international masters better endgame players than grandmasters? <laughs> Probably not. Was the grandmaster pulling my leg? Is there any meaning to unearth? <laughs> that is a good question. I tend to think that grandmasters in question were too lazy to give this position a serious look. But it does show that king and pawn endgames can be tricky, and anyone is capable, capable of completely misjudging such a complicated situation. All right, but let's take a look at what the truth is. That's where I like to be. Mm -hmm. Here. You like the Pokemon emotes? <laughs> uh, yeah, the crow gunk. Come on, you don't know about crow gunk. Sometimes I have emotes. I don't know where I got them from either. Yeah, from I yeah. know all these Pokemon. Hey, born in Oz. Nice. <laughs> hey, Avisar. All right, so black to move and draw. So here he played king e five in the game, which does draw. Um. At the last second, he also discovered king d5 draws in every line. Here's a sample. Here. This. See, this makes more sense to play it 
instead of like when the kings are here we can play c4 check like we've seen you play it now and if c4 okay we always have the potential to make a pass pawn and mm -hmm. just step in and take all these and your king can't help because i can play a five at any moment uh let's see b4 king d5 king d3 king c6 still king c4 here we actually looked at this variation already i guess and now f4 x clam black draws this as in peter's subsequent mainline analysis to f4 below so we'll look at this exact position i guess in a different move order all right so let's look at king e5 instead of king d5 which we just looked at now his original intention, if you remember, was to play f4 check. Right. Remember in the game the guy played g3 and, and it was a draw without too much trouble actually. f4 check is a blunder. Instead king d5 now is a draw still. King e2, king e4, b4, cb x clam. Worse is king d5, king d3, f4, c4 check. King c6 b5 check king d6 king e4 king e6 g3 black's defense breaks down this is Hummel's analysis indeed this is lost clearly again you if you take you can never like have your king help because we'll play a5 right, if your yeah. king goes too far to that file mm -hmm. so hey, don't take five there focus crazy Takes, takes, king d4. Looks kind of tough for black here, huh? Mm-hmm. This was given as a white win by Hummel and John Watson. But Jack Peters point out the position is actually a draw. I would assume it wins too, like they did. F4, similar to what we looked at before when I said we'd look at this. Although I think it was a little bit different position, actually. Let me see if I can find it. Oh, there's too much analysis here. Look at this. <laughs> this is crazy. I'll never find it. It's, I don't even know. <laughs> this is a very important but simple move that Peters found. It was missed by all of the title players we talked about. Black's king looks awfully far away, doesn't it? Yes, I'm shocked that this draws even now. King f6. A book draw follows if king takes here. Yeah, black's king gets to h8. Okay. We actually, I think, looked at that before. But yeah, there's no way you could possibly win because uh, you can't win the pawn with the king. You can only trade the pawn, which is obviously a draw. Mm -hmm. If my king's in front. Hey, working class hero. Hey, hey, weird guys. I did hear that. What happened? Um, I didn't get to see the interview because I was showering. Um, Hans got his... Um, Norm. Norm, we talked about nice. it. And I was watching part of the game. It was so cool the way he had the, um, that knight in the corner with the supported by the pawn. He was black. Mm -hmm. And I mean, you couldn't... You, there was no way to remove the knight. But I didn't get to see the end of the game. It was a really interesting game to me. Um, so I'm really happy for him. And um, the, the commentator actually... Um, used to play in the Atlanta area a lot um, on Hans' channel. Derek Wu, Rochelle Wu's brother, um, they used to live in Alabama, so I, I knew them from tournaments in Georgia before they moved to California. Yeah, that night on H2, yeah, that was really cool. Yeah, he, he did that G3 move, and um, I saw that it, it was looking good for him, but then I had to shower and get ready to come up here so i'm sorry i missed that interview but um i was really happy yeah you know them too chess coach but i was happy that uh hans did it <laughs> anyways we're almost done here oh yeah sorry to interrupt here there now the point of f4 earlier is obvious white can't play g3 so now all white can do is go back and forth Oh, yeah, kind of stuck in there. The game is drawn. Wow, that one's really tricky. 
Yes, I mean, we saw that several title players misevaluated at several points. Yeah, wow, that the one. The same game. Mm-hmm. All this is merely meant to be a warning. The fact is, complex king and pawn endgames are a bit of a rarity, and most masters on up love the idea of playing them. But they also know that such positions should be avoided if safe, clear alternatives are available. Yes, indeed. Mm-hmm. Pretty nice. So we finally finished that that part of that part, the section of this part, mm-hmm. I guess is how I would say it. Wow. That's a very dense chapter. Certainly. I mean, it was almost all analysis. <coughs> it wasn't me. so much of his prose, even still some prose. Hopefully no COVID. All right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we still got a knight part and just a part talking about king activity mm-hmm. and a queen and pawn in game one. And then that's it. So we got three more little sections of this section. And then the last part, dude, that's just extra stuff. Right. These are end games for pure pleasure. Okay. Nice. That's how you know you're cool when you look at end games just for fun. Yeah, we could maybe <laughs> intersperse those with some other mm-hmm. lecture. You know, start some other. I wanted to do some middle game. Middle game. That's stuff more else. important. And um, <laughs> in particular, I don't know if we can talk about different middle game plans. Actually, a computer flight. Uh, this is losing for white because I won't. I won't take you. I'll play F three and win. <laughs> Yeah, actually yeah. wins. So you're talking about middle game plans? Sorry to interrupt you there. Yeah, like um, different th- plans. Like I always have a hard time coming up with a plan. And so, I, you know, you, you could point out, oh, there's totally. majority here. Attack on the queen side. Or there's an isolated pawn here. You can mm-hmm. gang up on that. You know, whatever the plans are, I don't always see them or think they're obvious. Yeah, I could definitely. I have tons of stuff about that. Yeah, so we could talk about different classic middle game plans I think would be helpful for me um computer flight says how do you not lose interesting king g6 I guess I'll go here and then here yeah this draws like that Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, King G8. <laughs> yeah, end games are pretty tough, King and Pawn end games especially. Like I said, one time in a tournament game, I had uh, it was a Rook end game, and I transposed to a King and Pawn end game after thinking about it for about half an hour, and I found the right plan. There's only one plan to win, and I found it. Mm-hmm. It's pretty nice. 